Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Welcome to St. Philip Neri Parish. Who's visiting us this morning? Let's see who's here visiting. Who's visiting? Where from, young man? Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. Welcome, welcome. Where else? Where back there? Welcome, welcome. Good to have you. Welcome. Where else are we visiting from? Where from? Sutton's Bay, I think, right? No, no. Sterling Heights. Heights. Okay. I thought Sutton's Bay was right behind. There we are. Okay. There. Okay. And where? Wayne, Wayne, Indiana. Welcome, welcome. Where else? Over here? Where? where else? Brighton, Michigan. Good to have you. Welcome. Anyone else visiting? Way over there? Okay, from Traverse City. Good to have you. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Well, before we start Mass, we always pray. And so let's go to the front of our hymnals and find our prayer here, and let's pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. amen. My parish is composed of people like me. I help make it what it is. It'll be friendly if I am. It'll be holy if I am. Its pews will be filled if I help fill them. It will do great work if I work. It'll be prayerful if I pray. It'll make generous gifts to many causes if I'm a generous giver. It'll bring others into worship if I invite and bring them. It'll be a parish of loyalty and love of fearlessness and faith, of compassion, charity, and mercy, if I who make it what it is am filled with these same things. Therefore, with the help of God, I now dedicate myself to the task of being all things I want my parish to be. Amen. Amen. And I want to tell you that I know many of you who have been here for a long, long time know Leonard and Sally Thorson. They're celebrating their 72nd anniversary. Okay. So if you want to drop them a note congratulating them, that should be a wonderful thing. Okay? Um, let's turn to each other and welcome each other to Mass. Okay. Morning. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Welcome. welcome. I'm glad the front pew is full. Welcome. Good to see you. I miss you. are <laughs> Welcome. Le- I, yeah, I need to get to church. Welcome, Aunt Betty. Welcome. Yeah, I welcome. Yeah, I was just almost a stop next pew. Okay. <laughs> welcome. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome. Fred, okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Welcome. Welcome, everyone. Okay. Okay. Good morning and welcome again. Today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 837, Gather Your People. Number 837. Bread, one body, 
continues to call us into his life. And for those times that we know that we failed the Lord and have sinned, we humbly come before him asking once again for his great mercy shown towards us. You came to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all of us sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. And you plead for each one of us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life that is everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Lord Jesus Christ, God in Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer, you are seated at the the right hand of the Father Have mercy on us Glory to God, glory to God Glory to God in the highest And on earth, peace on earth Peace to people of good will For you alone are the Holy you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Lord, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, glory to 
God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Sirach. The Lord is a God of justice who knows no favorites. Though not unduly partial toward the weak, yet he hears the cry of the oppressed. The Lord is not deaf to the wail of the orphan, nor to the widow when she pours out her complaint. The one who serves God willingly is heard. His petition reaches the heavens. The prayer of the lowly pierces the clouds. It does not rest till it reaches its goal, nor will it withdraw till the Most High responds, judges justly, and affirms the right, and the Lord will not delay. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just one cries out, the Lord hears and rescues him in all his distress. The Lord hears the cry of the poor, the Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. All who trust in him shall not be condemned. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor.
a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have completed well. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. And I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil threat and will bring me safe to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. and despised everyone else. Two people went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee, and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee took up his position and spoke this prayer to himself. Oh God, I thank you that I am not like the rest of humanity, greedy, dishonest, adulterous, and even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I pay tithes on my whole income. But the tax collector stood off in a distance and would not even raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and prayed, O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, the latter went home justified, but not the former. For whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and the one who humbles himself will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
this is so true. Almost all of us here at one point in our life will be given some very bad news. Maybe some of us here have already received that bad news. And the news I'm talking about is not the loss of a job, the failure of a test in school, the moving away from good friends we love, or are not interested from someone we've asked out on a date. No, I'm talking about the biggest kind of news. The day we go and see the doctor, and he tells us that we have an illness that could possibly take our life soon. This is rough stuff. This is the kind of information I think that we don't know how to react to sometimes. We don't know how to react sometimes to bad news. And for many of us, we react with sorrow, with anger, disappointment, sometimes resignation, and sometimes even with peace. I remember in 2015, I went to the doctor and found out that I had a very rare blood disorder. And the doctor told me, I think you have leukemia. And I thought, what? What? I had to do a spinal tap, he told me, to find out. I was really scared. Didn't know what would happen, and obviously, I'm okay. I didn't have leukemia. But we know bad news really affects us in such a way we can't even know how to go forward sometimes. We don't even know what to do. And my guess is that when many of us get that bad news, the majority of us start looking at our life and the days ahead. You see, I'm pretty sure most of us people here would be in that situation and start assessing our past actions, our past attitudes start thinking about the person we have been in our life over the course of our life. And surprisingly, the things that were most important to us now don't become very important at all. People become more important than all. And suddenly, we change things around soon. And as believers, I think such of us, such as ourselves here today, I think one of the most important things that we would all be about and to, wanting to say confidently is that I compete, competed well, I ran the race, I kept the faith. That I really kept the faith my whole life. Wouldn't that be true? That we want that to be the most important thing when we face the prospect of dying soon, we want to know that we've done a good job with our life, a decent job, that we've had the Lord as part of our life, we've lived the faith, a life that was pleasing to God, and that we don't have a long list of regrets, a long list of things maybe we could be ashamed of. We want God to look at us and see someone who has really been trying be a good person, a steadfast person, a sincere believer, someone that truly has kept the faith. Kept the faith. Paul clearly was facing that at the end of his life. He told us, as he wrote to Timothy in that second letter, my departure is at hand. He follows the statement with what he believes to be an honest assessment of his own life, how he lived it giving an accounting of his own spiritual journey. He tells Timothy, I've competed well, I've finished the race, I kept the faith. Boy, I wish I could feel that exact same way today, tomorrow, and at the end of my life, and I bet you do too. I know we would all want to feel that way, seriously. But how do we know? On what basis could we make those words? What is the criteria? What's the answer key that allows me to know I've done a good job? I've gotten a good grade from God and how I've lived. Is it just a wild guess or a hope based on nothing? Or is there someone 
and someone that can tell us. In one sense, probably the answer could be no. God is all-knowing and therefore knows all things about each of our lives. Maybe things we don't even know. And as you've heard me say countless times before, God is God and we are not. And of course, <clears throat> even talking about God in this sort of way can sometimes lead us to falsely believe that maybe we can fully explain and understand who God is. And that would be nonsense. Does that mean we have to remain completely in the dark? Or is there still a way to find out, I think, and how we can shed a light onto the situation of our faith and how we're living it? A way to really find out and illuminate for ourselves, maybe, an honest assessment of our own faithfulness, how we've been doing, or the lack of. My friends, I think it all depends on what we mean by keeping, keeping the faith. Because there's a lot of ways we could look at that. And that's tricky. For that phrase, if we're not careful, could mean so many different things to many people. For some, it might mean that they publicly acknowledge certain beliefs, statements that we say in the creed over and over again, that they know that they believe those statements of the creed, they believe in the moral matters of our faith, they try to live them, they say the right thing <clears throat> about our faith. And for some, it means fulfilling the nuts and bolts of being a Catholic, making sure we go to Mass every Sunday, every Saturday night, that we truly try to support the parish the best way we can. We fast when the church asks us to fast on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday and on the Fridays during Lent, <clears throat> that we go to confession at least once a year, that we try to do these sorts of things, keep the rules, we follow the rules of the faith. And for some, it might mean simply not an outwardly denying our belief in God or Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit, but truly saying that we do believe. And when people ask us about if we're religious or not, we say to them, yeah, I'm Catholic, I'm religious, is that faith? I'm saying, are all these things faith, or could it be even more? I know in our hearts that can be or can't be. We wish we were all, had it all together because that would make things so much easier, but we know that deep down our faith requires more of us. We know that. For a true faith, either explicit or implicit, is always connected to the way we live our faith, the works we do, the things we're about, the concrete things that people can see us doing because we believe. And that measure is a simple and difficult one. It's all about the degree to which we all have loved with our life. That is, are we a good, kind, loving, generous, compassionate person? Then what we say, we believe matters little. If anything but what we do matters. And we fall far short of that ideal, fall far short of being the kind of people that God really wants us and hopes to be us to be. We fall short of being the people God created us to be, we fall short of being the people that Jesus died for. That's why our gospel story today is one that I think should give all of us so much hope today. So much hope. That story from Luke, Jesus doesn't affirm, does he, at all, the person who's convinced about his own goodness, who think, who's so self-righteous and thinks he's the best thing since sliced bread. Does God form, affirm him? Not at all. Not one bit. Rather, he affirms the sincerity of the one who sits in the back and cries out, Oh, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Wanting and needing God's mercy, God in Jesus says, 
this was the better person. The one who knows he's not perfect yet, but keeps trying and trying and trying to be the person God wants him to be. Is there anyone here today that's perfect? Please stand for us to see you. I live with you. I know you're not perfect. <laughs> as you know, I'm not it as well. No one stood up. And so that means we have hope today, doesn't it? Because we all want God to be merciful to us, sinners. We all know we have a ways to go. We all know we have a way even more to be per more perfect, to be more loving, more kind and generous and good and compassionate. We all know that. And we come before God with that today. And that's what faith is. Faith is to say we need God more than ever. And we don't have all the answers. We don't know everything. We still need to keep searching and wanting more. We want a faith that bears fruit, not that does not bear fruit. We want a faith that shows that we really, really have lived the faith. So the day when we go home and our body lays there in the middle of the aisle, people can say, yeah, he did compete well. He ran the race. He kept the faith. She did it all right. He did it all right. I can see it by the way they lived. Let's ask God today to keep transforming us so we can be like that tax collector who really did have a faith and a deep need for God. Maybe always have that need too, knowing that God is the only one that can make us full and give us all we need. Amen. Amen. Let's stand and proclaim our great faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God and light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God, our Father, we now turn to you with these, our many needs, in our prayers today. That the church may preach and live the life of humility, constant repentance, and joyful fidelity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have never heard the gospel, that thanks to the work of preachers and the witness of each of us, all people may hear and believe the good news. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God, who hears the cry of the oppressed, may inspire those in the media to be a stronger voice for the weak, the marginalized, and the unborn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all whose lives and homes have been affected by bad weather, 
that they may find strength from the Lord in the assistance of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the lonely, and all whom the Lord has called from this world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Peggy King and Kevin Herman, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on this World Mission Sunday, we pray for all of our missionaries throughout our world, especially in the third world countries, that continue to spread the good news of Jesus Christ's love. May God continue to strengthen them in all that they do to spread the gospel of good news. And may we as God's people always support them in their mission and give them what they need to do their work. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For any intention that you brought to Mass today that you'd like to mention to our Lord in the silence of your heart. We pray to the Lord. Lord, And for Dr. Paul DeRosa, who passed away this week, that God will bless him in, in, in heaven and bless his family as they mourn him. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, you have gifted us again with the most beautiful day. We thank you for giving us the sun again and the beauty of the fall. We thank you for the many blessings that you give each of us that we couldn't even count. Thank you, Lord, for always taking care of us. May we always be thankful to you and always bless you with our lives back. Bless us in this Mass, and as we go forth and him or here, may we always be your people of faith, showing that we live our faith in all we do, all we say. Answer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are now seated, our ushers come forward accepting your goodness. Thank you, people of God, for blessing St. Philip Neary Parish with your love today. Thank you. Darkness at all. 
pray, my dearest sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our improvement of all his holy church. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings made to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in the company of all the choirs of angels in heaven, we praise you. And with great joy, we now proclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Set us free. Therefore, 
For as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church gathered throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Jeffrey Walsh, our bishop, all the clergy, religious, and the entire baptized priestly people of God. Remember Bob and Peggy uh, King and Kevin Herman, whom you've called from this life, and all who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with her spouse, St. Joseph, the Apostles, St. Philip, and all the saints, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare now to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours. Now Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Shall we share that sign of love and peace with each other? Father Pat. Bless you. Thanks for coming.
of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. For those who are celebrating with us via the internet. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Stephen, the body of Christ. Luke, the body of Christ. Peter, the body of Christ. Dave, the body of Christ. Kay, the body of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. This Your breath broke. 
I am sure you saw in Kim's email to us on, on this weekend that our bishop apologizes for having to take up two second collections right in a row. Uh, but this weekend is for the Mission Sunday, a collection for all of our missionaries to help them to keep doing the work they do in our world. And so today we take up that second collection for our missionaries. And as we do that, let's pray our prayers for all those suffering in our world, all those in Ukraine, all those... In, Florida, all those places where there's so much unrest, let's ask the Lord to send them angels today to help all of them. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect us in what lies ahead for us, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And just a few reminders. First off, as you know, we're getting ready to do our Christmas festival on December 4th. And every year it's a delightful event. And Kim wants you to get your reservations in as soon as possible for that special evening. So please give her a call. We want to make it fill, fill it up soon by November 6th, then we're going to open up to non-parishioners if they would like to come to our event. So please get your reservations in first, okay? And um, if you are considering this year a year-end gift to the parish uh, because of taxes or whatever it might be, um, why don't you consider this year maybe underwriting part of the festival? Uh, it's a nice thing to only make profit when you have a festival. If there's people that have extra gifts this year they can want to share, it might be a nice thing just to help with that event this year so we can have total profit from the festival. Okay? All Saints Day Masses will be 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. Just going to let you know beforehand. That's Tuesday, November 1st. We have a special uh, speaker at those Masses. Um, we will celebrate our loved one. <laughs> I think Father Pat slept too much last night. I think something. <laughs> um, we will celebrate All Souls Day the next day on November, uh, November 2nd. And um, we will have that Mass at 6 p.m. And that's the Mass where we bring all the candles and place them on the altar area around here in the front to honor all those that we've lost in our lives, okay? And at the bulletin stands today, um, you know, we want you to sign up for our brunch that will happen on November 6th. I need to know so I can buy enough kielbasa for the brunch that Sunday, so please let us know. Faith Mauritian classes will be this weekend after Mass, so kids come back and, and keep learning about the Lord, okay? And coffee and donuts are after Mass today, and Peter's going to say so for me. i got one more thing yet. Okay. Okay, one more thing. Mr. Ray Varga and also uh, Kathy brought us a bunch of apples from their orchard today. There's all kinds of apples back there by the Blessed Vir Virgin statue, oh. so please take them home with you. They're being very generous with us. Thank you, Ray and Kathy. Thank you so much. And we are forming the Christmas Choir again this year, so please prayerfully consider being part of that group. Uh, two, just only two things you got to do. You got to carry a tune, and you, you got to be here on Christmas Eve in Empire. That's, uh, that's important, too. Um, we are starting the first rehearsal after the All Saints Mass on November 1st. That Mass is at 6 p.m. The evening Mass is at 6 p.m. We'll rehearse right after that. And so uh, don't let an occasional conflict prevent you. You don't have to attend all the rehearsals, but uh, prayerfully consider being part of that group. And if you have any questions, just let me or any cantor know. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Okay. I think we did everything we're supposed to do today. Right, Father Pat? Okay, good. Okay. <laughs> I hope you all get a chance to take a walk on the beach today or go for a ride and see the beautiful colors because you know what's coming, everyone. Enjoy it now, okay? <laughs> Enjoy it now. This is just a shock, isn't it, to be able to wear short sleeves to church on late October? That doesn't seem to happen very often, does it? No. So praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. Thank you. Let's bow our heads asking for God's blessing. May the Lord always bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you. May the Lord always walk beside you. May the Lord 
always bless you and keep you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's go forth now glorifying God with our lives. Thanks be to God. Uh-huh.